Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Father Tom Papazoglakis, and I serve as rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Friday, in the week of the seventh Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Our lesson is from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, beginning at the 27th verse. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of humans and the seed of animals. And just as I have watched over them to pluck up and break down, to overthrow, destroy, and bring evil, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days they shall no longer say, The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But all shall die for their own sins. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors, when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Here ends the lesson. After prophesying in the previous chapters the terrible judgment that was to befall Israel for the sins of God's covenant people, the prophet Jeremiah now brings forward a new message of hope. In this new age, God will plant the nations of Israel and Judah with the offspring of men and animals. Jeremiah again used agricultural and architectural metaphors to illustrate God's work. Although God had judged Judah for her sin, he now willingly reverses that judgment. In doing so, God's work for the nation will silence a proverb that was common in Jeremiah's day. The understanding in the days of Jeremiah was that the people of Israel were being punished by God for the sins of their ancestors as expressed by the proverb that says, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. It was then that the children experienced the effects of having their teeth set on edge. And Jeremiah says, no, that is not always the case. But all shall die for their own sins, should that be the case. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. Said a little differently, God's justice will guarantee that each guilty person will die for their own sin. In addition to a new beginning, God promised to make a new covenant with His people. This new covenant was expressly for the northern kingdom, or the house of Israel, and the house of Judah, or the southern kingdom. It would not be like the covenant God had made with Israel's forefathers at the time of the Exodus as documented in the Torah. That covenant had been broken by the people. God warned in Leviticus and Deuteronomy that a series of punishments or curses would be called down upon those who violated His law. The final judgment would be a physical deportation from the land of Israel with the destruction of Jerusalem in 586 BC. This final curse was completed. God set a holy standard of conduct before the people, which the people chose not to obey, much as we may find in our own day. 
the consequence of this disobedience was that a change was needed. In response, Jeremiah offers a message of hope as God says, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays or 8 or 9.30 on Sunday mornings. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings. Mm -hmm.